Good morning. We will pay attention to manufacturing today. If we look at the production cost statement, we see that the primary costs consist of direct material plus direct labor. The reason why that is called primary cost is because you can't produce anything if you don't have material. On the other hand, if you have material but you don't have any laborers to change it into a useful article, you cannot produce anything. So direct material plus direct labor is your primary cost. Then we have factory overheads. It's all the other expenses that you pay so that you also need to produce the article. So my three basic expenses that will be paid is direct material, direct labor. The two of them together form your primary cost and then you pay over it. The direct material is the material that is included in the product. So if we have a factory where we make dresses and we cut out the pattern, the material that's included in the dress will be your direct material. The material that is falling off on the sides is also costing the uh, manufacturing money and that will be called factory overheads. Direct labor is the people who sit and make the articles. Indirect labor is, for instance, the manager or the cleaner of the factory. Other people who also work there, but that's not involved directly in the fact, uh, manufacturing process. Factory overheads are all the other expenses that you have to manufacture goods. So, for instance, the first one will be indirect material, indirect labor, the electricity that you pay, the rent for the building, insurance, depreciation. So, all the other costs that you have. So, the total cost of production is your three basic expenses, direct material, direct labor, plus overheads. So, the total cost of production is direct material, direct labor, and factory overheads. Then the work in progress at the beginning of the year is the products that was not completed at the end of the previous financial year that will be completed in the current year. The work in progress at the end of the year are the half completed goods at the end of the year. So the work in progress at the beginning of the year will be added to your cost of production because it will be finished by the end of the year. So it will form part of your cost of finished goods. And the work in progress at the end of the year that you didn't finish, you will subtract because it does not form part of your cost of finished goods. So when you do the production cost statement, they can give different information for you. So you have to determine very carefully whether they give you the total cost of production, that means direct material, direct labor over it, or whether they give you the cost of finished goods that will also include the work in progress. If we look at the information, the direct material cost is 125 rand and the total number of units produced was 12,000. So if I take the 255 times the 12, it will give me my total primary cost. My direct material is 125 rand times the 12,000 will give me the 15,000. They don't give me any information about the direct labor, but the total cost of production is given. And if they give you the total cost of production, it means that you can put in this total cost of production as 4680. So I can take the primary cost plus the overheads to determine what is my total cost of production. Now, if they do it the other way around and they give you the total cost of production, 
then you take the 4680, subtract the primary cost, and that will give you the expense for factory overheads. Then they say that there is overheads of work in progress at the beginning of the year was 120,000 rand. So it means that I will add the 120,000 because that is the goods that will be completed during the current year. And it will form part of the closing products at the end of the year. The work in progress at the end of the year is 140,000. So we will subtract the 140,000. And then I can determine what is my total cost of finished goods. So when you do this calculations, it is very important to determine what is all the information that was given. So for primary costs, they gave us the information. They didn't give direct labor and we could subtract the primary cost and to take the total amount, subtract the direct material to get the direct labor. Normally they will give you the overhead or enough information to calculate the overheads. In this exercise, they didn't give you the overheads, but they gave you the total cost of production. So I will take the total cost of production and subtract the primary cost from it to get the factory overheads. Okay. If we want to calculate the cost of finished goods, we need to know what was the opening stock of finished goods. We have to know what is the cost of finished goods produced. Now that information is already given because this cost of finished goods we calculated in the production cost statement and we can use that here to say that is the total number. Now if you, if you think of the calculation that we completed when we used the periodic inventory system, we took opening inventory plus purchases, less closing inventory, and that gave us the cost of finished goods. So in the manufacturing process, we will basically do the same. We will take the finished goods that we had at the beginning of the year, plus the cost of finished goods produced. So instead of buying goods, we are now making the goods. So it means that we will not have purchases there but we will show the cost of manufactured goods there because we are making our own goods. And then we will subtract the closing stock of finished goods. Now this information is not given to me. So the first thing that I have to do is I must determine what is the cost price per unit when we make the goods and we must calculate how many articles that we make in the current year. If we look at the information provided, you will see that from number one until number six, those six was used for the production cost statement to determine what was the total cost of production. If we look at number seven, they give us the number of bags sold during the year, number of unsold bags at the end of the year, and they tell us that there were finished goods both at the end and at the beginning of the year. And the cost stayed the same over a period of two years. So that means they give us in number seven, eight and nine information about the number of bags that were sold. And that so that we can determine how many was produced and what was the cost of the finished goods at the beginning of the year. So what's very important here in number one, nine is that they say the finished goods we have both at the end and at the beginning of the year. They give us the number of unsold bags at the end of the year as 1,500. They don't give us the number at the beginning of the year. So the first calculation that we'll have to do is to calculate how many bags that we produce during the current year. Okay, so if we look at this information here, it means that if I want to know how many goods that we 
produced this year, I have to take the number of finished goods at the beginning of the year. This figure was not given to me, so this is my unknown figure. Then the number of finished goods produced during the year. So I had some goods at the beginning of the year, plus the ones that we made during the year. This 12,000 is given to me. The number of finished goods at the end of the year is 1,500. So that means that is the goods that was left over at the end of the year that we didn't sell. So this information is also given to me. So if I take my opening stock plus all my production during the year minus the 1,500 that we didn't sell during the year, then it gives me the number of goods sold, 15,000. And I can do a mathematical calculation to say that this unknown figure equals the number that was sold minus the 12,000 plus the 1,500. And that means that the total number of um, is 4,500. If we look at the number of articles that was produced during the current year, we see that they give us the information and they say the number of bags completed during the current year was 12,000 bags. So if I want to calculate what was the cost per bag, I can say this total cost that we had, the 4660, divided by the 12,000 that was made during the year. So that means the cost per unit was 388. We did this calculation now to determine that we had 4,500 at the beginning of the year. So if I take 4,500 units at the beginning, multiply with the 388 cost per unit, it will give me the value of my opening finished goods. The manufacturing cost will give me the cost of finished goods produced. So I'll just take that from the manufacturing statement. And the cost of the closing finished goods, they told us that we've got 1,500 left at the end of the year. So the 1,500 times the 388 will give us 582,000. So if I take my opening inventory plus the finished goods that we made during the current year minus the finished goods that's not sold by the end of the year, we can calculate what is the cost of finished goods sold. Now what is cost of finished goods sold? That is the same as cost of sales. So if we want to determine the profit, we can say that the total sales price was 15,000, they told us, times 520. So that information was given, so it's easy to calculate the sales. The cost of sales equals the amount that we calculated year as cost of finished goods. So cost of sales mean cost of goods already sold. So we can put in the 5824 as cost of sales. If I subtract that, then I calculate my gross profit. They've given you the selling and distribution cost and the administration cost. If we subtract that, we will get the net profit. So what did we learn today? Very important that cost of production is direct material, direct labor, and overheads. Cost of finished goods is cost of production. So it's my three basic expenses plus opening work in progress because the things that was unfinished at the end of the previous year was completed during the current year minus the closing work in progress because it does not form part of your uh, completed goods at the end of the year. Cost of sales means the total cost price of goods already sold. So in, it replaces the purchases that we normally have because we make the goods. So I will take my opening 
stock plus the cost of finished goods in place of purchases, less closing fin finished goods, and that will give me my cost of sales.